Hi everyone, this is James from James Dean Designs and if you're interested in the 3018 Pro CNC machine or a beginner to CNC in general then stick around while we dive into this box of bits. Just to give you a bit of background on the machine itself, the 3018 Pro is one of the cheapest on the market. Prices start at around £140. They're usually made and distributed from China, but you can find local suppliers as well. One of the things that makes this machine so versatile is it can do engraving, it can do cutting, you can also upgrade it with a laser module and do bits with that. I've got a laser module for mine and we'll talk about that in a later episode. It's worth mentioning at this point as well that I'm a beginner to CNC, so this is the first machine I've ever bought, certainly the first machine I've ever built. I'm just getting used to the terminology, so if I do say anything wrong, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm trying to learn myself as well. What we're going to do in today's episode is unpack everything. I'm going to talk about some of the different parts and what they do with the machine. In the second episode, we'll build the machine itself third episode we'll connect it up to a computer get some tests done and then finally in the fourth episode we'll look at the laser module more and see what we can do with that but for now let's get stuck into the box of parts so the box has arrived quite damaged I'm hoping everything is okay inside but it has traveled a halfway around the world so some damage is probably expected All right, let's get stuck in so first few parts we come across is the power pack obviously this supplies the power to the machine i've also got the laser module this is what we'll talk about later in another episode this is the 15 watt laser and hopefully that should do some quite good cutting and engraving we also have a power adapter for the power pack itself just to convert whether you're in the uk the us The next few parts that we have are the rods and the thread bar. These help keep the platform itself uh, steady and allow it to move back and forwards and just generally control the X and Y axis. The next couple of parts are the feet for the machine. So these sit together, those bars that we've just mentioned will go across these joining it all together and this is where the bed sits on. These are the side pieces. Again you're going to have some threaded bars going across here and this will, help, this will allow the motor to move left and right. It also allows the uh, motor which has got the Z axis to move up and down. The next part is the bed itself. This is usually where you'll mount all your work that needs to be cut in. Do notice that one side has four grooves one side has three grooves. This is relevant to when you're building it because some will take slots for it to be mounted onto the base whilst the other side will then take the clamps to hold your work in place. Now we have some of the electrical components. This is the USB cable just for obviously connecting it up to your laptop or computer. Got an additional cable here. This is for supplying the power to the machine. We then have the circuit board itself. Obviously this is the motherboard and runs the machine. This converts all of your G-code into the actual movements that take place on the machine itself. We also have a little USB stick. I'm gonna guess this contains the software for running uh, the CNC machine. got one piece of aluminium extrusion there should be several pieces of these because these help hold the feet together and the sides for all the different axes that need to run looks like this last piece may have been packed upside down so here we have two other pieces of aluminium extrusion 
So it's worth noting that the longer ones will be for the base, whereas the shorter one will be for the other axis that holds the machine itself. We have some of the nuts and bolts in here. These are for the clamps um, on the actual bed. These allow you to hold your work in place. These are the tools itself for cutting and engraving. You get a selection here, different ones possibly with slightly different angles. They're all very sharp, so do be careful. We then have one of the most important pieces. Obviously this is the, the holder with the machine itself for doing the cutting and engraving. This is also your Z axis which controls the height. So take good care of that. Have another piece of aluminium extrusion. I say this just helps to keep all the base together and sturdy. These also come pre-threaded on the ends to allow uh, the the bolts to go in when you're building the machine itself. We have safety glasses. Right, these are your two stepper motors. Now, stepper motors are just a posh name for motors that control the, the different axes. Obviously, one will control your X axis, the other will control your Y axis. There's no difference between them, they both do the same job but they are quite vital into controlling the machine. Different types of machines have different stepper motors. Obviously these are the ones for this particular machine. We have some of the cables. These are for connecting the stepper motors to the motherboard itself. We have the power cord. This obviously connects to the power pack that we saw earlier. This is your EC11 collet. This is what the little bits go into for the engraving and cutting. This attaches to your motor and then the bits go up from the bottom and just allows you to do all of your work. Now we have a pack of the different various nuts and bolts. These will obviously allow you to assemble the extrusion to the feet and the side plates. They'll also allow you to attach the bed to the bars. Um, looks like they do supply some heat sinks as well, which I think will be for the motherboard. And then also some spring clips, which just allow your um, motors to attach to the threaded bar and not move about too much. A few more various nuts and bolts, again just aiding the assembly. They also supply you with the various Allen keys for assembling this. One final uh, wire connector. I think this may be for the motor itself or for the laser module. And then the final parts that we have are the um, the runners that they attach to the bars on the base and this your bed sits on top of these. These are what allow the bed to move backwards and forwards smoothly. And then this one is the one that takes the threaded bar and obviously that spins through the middle with the, with the little brass nuts that we saw earlier. So these are spring loaded. They sit inside there and it just allows this to stay on the bar and minimizes any um, any loose movement within it. So that's everything unpacked for now. I think it's about time that we get assembling. So that's the end of episode one. We've got all our various parts unpacked and in order. And now we're gonna move on to assembling it in episode two. If you're not already liking and subscribing the page, then please do so and I'll see you in the next episode.